Rebuilding three Stuart steam plants, part seven. I'm currently working on the Stuart score engine. The time has come to paint the bed plate. While the paint is drying, I clean up the connecting rods. Here's a collection of parts. Some have been cleaned, some are awaiting cleaning. If you look at the steam chest at the far left, you may see the same problem that I'm seeing. It is cracked. This will need some repairs and I'll show that in a future episode. In this video, I'm concentrating on painting the bed plate. Here it is, ready for repainting. But it's already got paint on it, I can hear you saying. Yes, I know, and this paint is so well stuck to the metal, I'm not going to even try to remove it. It sat for two days in a tub of cellulose thinners, and it's still there. So one can assume that this paint is very well stuck to the metal. Let the painting begin. And as you can see, I'm not using any primer. Generally speaking, when I paint cast iron parts, I don't use primer. Then if the paint chips, it's very easy to repair it. With a thick layer of primer underneath, it's much more difficult to repair the paint. And while on the subject of paint, I'm using Phoenix Precision Paints, Great Western Railway Green for this job, and I'm purposely not using a primer, as I've just mentioned. This video is running at a high speed just to get through it, because it took quite a long time. So what I'm going to do is play some music. I created this tune a while ago, and to avoid any confusion, I've renamed the tune, painting the bed plate of a Stuart score on Easter Sunday 2025. The music will only play over the painting section of this video. And that's all of the painting in this episode. Here's the usual shot of the paint drying, although I did actually put the part on the radiator, which really bakes the paint on. The bottle in the background, called Bristle Magic, is incredible. It was recommended to me by my friend Andrew's wife, whose name is Michelle, and she's a very talented artist and sculptor. And she was right, it's the best stuff I've ever used for cleaning and reconditioning paintbrushes. The next part of the job is to clean the rust from around the flywheel. I don't need to repaint it, I just need to clean the edge. Here's the newly painted bed plate taking centre stage in this image. This was of course before I put it on the radiator. Now the paint's really baked on and it looks great. Like most parts of this engine, the connecting rods haven't been fettled properly. They're still more or less as cast just flattened off, and they don't look good. They need to be sort of almost round in section. The job starts by using a needle file, being very careful not to stick it in my hand. I do have a flat edge needle file, but for the moment I cannot find it. This job was very deceptive. It took a long time to complete. And really, doing it by hand was the only solution. A grinder could be dangerous, because it would probably dig in and make a mess of it. To get a good finish, I could only take the filing so far. And that's where these things come in useful. Rotary abrasives. This is a green wheel, which is not the best one to use. I need something a little bit more coarse than this. The different colours of these wheels are sort of the grit ratings like you get on wet or dry sandpaper. The light coloured one 
is the roughest. At the moment I'm using this very well worn green one just to show what I'm doing. But in a very short time I removed the green wheel because it was at the end of its useful life and I fitted one of these, which is definitely a coarser abrasive. After cleaning the part with the light coloured wheel I went back to the green one, just to get a better, finer finish. Although as I've just mentioned, this green wheel is really ready for the bin now. Although the groove that's been worn in the middle of it is actually quite useful for guiding it on a circular part. I removed the two outer main bearings and completely forgot about the middle one. And here I am cleaning one of them on the whetstone, but doing it wrong on purpose. It's important to use oil on a whetstone. Don't use it dry because the metal particles will clog the stone. It works in exactly the same way as wet or dry sandpaper, although I'm not using water, I'm using oil. Often though, with a piece of wet or dry sandpaper on a flat surface, I use oil as a lubricant and it works just as well as water. It's important to keep the wet stone fairly clean. Here I'm using a piece of kitchen towel and the oil is surprisingly dirty. I haven't shown it in this video, but I also cleaned up the steam chests. If you look carefully at the one in the middle, you can see that it's cracked. I wonder if that's why the steam inlet was put at the bottom where it was out of sight. Anyway, I'll have to fix that. But that's it for now. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my main steam models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.